I'm Andrew Morrison, Chairman of the New Zealand Meat Board, and welcome and thank you for joining us today. This meeting reports on the 2021-2022 financial year. This is the third year that we've run the uh, virtual New Zealand Meat Board. This is the first time we've had an outage, so it's always a good experience. Um, but we're using technology now to try and enable that we get across our message across to more farmers with the technology that's available to us today. Please mark the meeting has been called before versus us having any quality issues, the request will be able to be viewed later on the website. I can confirm that we have a quorum of livestock farmers who have voted online and who have registered in our present today's call. Next slide, please. The agenda for today is that New, we are New Zealand Meat Board is a statutory body governed by the Meat Board Act 2004 legislation and is administered by Ministry of Primary Industries. The agenda today is set out in front of you. Welcome, Chairman's Report, Chief Executive's Report, Resolution to Increase Director's Fees, Resolution to Appoint Auditor, Consultation on our Industry Good Funding Proposal, General Business. We will then indicate where the next annual New Zealand meet, what annual meeting will be. Finally, we'll finish up with a presentation from Mel Poulton, as Special Agri Cultural Trade Envoy. That's the agenda for today. Chance slide, please. We have one registered apology. One of our New Zealand Meat Board Directors, George Tatham, has put in a late an apology due to a family um, uh, commitment. So I would just like to register that, uh, the apologies from George Tatham. The minutes from the annual meeting held on March 15, 2022, I confirm that the minutes were accepted as a true and accurate record at the New Zealand Meat Board meeting post the meeting in April 2022. These, meeting, uh, these minutes were included in the New Zealand Meat Board notice of meeting referenced on the New Zealand Meat Board website. The meeting procedures today, are one vote per livestock farm will be adopted for voting on all the matters at this annual meeting. The board determined that under section 58 paragraph three of the Meat Board Act 2004, that the voting entitlement will be the same as set out in the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Constitution, which is one farmer, one vote for ordinary resolutions. Voting has been conducted online and postal voting and concluded on 22nd of March. We will advise the results next week, but during the meeting, we will have time to take any questions on these resolutions. Next slide, please. Vision statement, New Zealand farmers and industry prosperity through safeguarding and realising the value of quota markets and reserves. Quite a large role and first role. Next slide, please. My team has reported to us, uh, support the New Zealand Meat Board centenary this last year. It was a momentous step in the Meat Board history. We celebrated 100 years of the meat industry and 140 years since the first export of frozen sheep meat sale out of Dunedin on the SS Dunedin. We took the opportunity to celebrate with a uh, function in London on 24th of May 2022. This, and as I say, this was 140 years since the Dunedin arrived in London with New Zealand's first export shipment of frozen sheep meat. Meanwhile, back in New Zealand, at late June, New Zealand Meat Board hosted a book in Wellington attended by past chairman, directors and CEOs. In change, the book commission recognises the significant industry progression by exporter, producers and industry contributors over the last 25 years. It's a great read. If you want to get your copy, uh, www.meetingchange.nz. I would encourage you to understand the progression of the industry that everyone has access and has read it. Change slides, please. New Zealand Meat Board has two functions, quote management and managing farmer reserves. Um, the value of the quota administration in New Zealand is calculated $2.6 billion of quota export uh, market value in EU, UK, ES, UK and US quota markets. The fact that we administer this quota in New Zealand delivers $782 million per export year of tariff savings. 
It's 456 million in the EU UK sheep meat and goat market and 326 million tariff savings for US beef and veal. Just wanted to clarify that as a program saving. The next thing the New Zealand Meat Board does is administer or has the responsibility to administer the 77.8 million of farm reserves. Quite often there's a question of where did the reserves come from. The origins is the fund trace back to the meat pool account and the meat industry stabilisation account. And this was through the marking of women and meat produced in New Zealand primarily for the United Kingdom in the late 40s. In the 1950s, arrangements between the Federated Farmers and Government and validated by legislation set up the Meat Industry Reserve Account. And this was set up and managed to administer these funds. This 77.8 million comprises of three funds, 62.8 million of contingency fund, <clears throat> excuse me, 3 million of quota market contingency, and the remaining 12.3 million of general reserves net of the investment fluctuation reserve. There's three separate roles for these accounts. The first one being the providing funds to assist in a major industry crisis to reopen export markets. That's the 62.8 million. The three is maintain a prudent level of net assets to avoid jeopardizing quota markets and the integrity of the quota management systems. The final 12.3 is providing funding for industry good activities through the interest bearing from these accounts. Next slide, please. It's been a very fulsome year in the trade environment with the, the verification, or sorry, the uh, UK New Zealand government signing the free trade agreement on the 28th of February 2022 resulting in the opportunity for New Zealand red meat trade into the UK during the transition period of 15 years. The date of entry into force for the UK NZFTA depends on the UK completing domestic power ratification processes. Currently, the advice is entry into force will occur mid-year of this year, hopefully. The board is working closely with MPI and MFAT to conclude its preparedness planning in anticipation of this entry into force. This is a significant outcome for New Zealand red meat sector. Beef access commencing at 12,000 tonnes on entry of force, increasing to 38,830 tonnes in year 10, with safeguards for year 11 to 15. This is additional to the WTA quota, WTO quota that currently sits at 198 tonnes. So this is a significant outcome for um, beef access into the UK market. The second part is sheep, mix, sheep meat access will be fully liberalised after 15 years. Duty free transition quotas for 30, 35,000 tonnes in year one to four, 50,000 tonnes in year five to 15. Please note that these <coughs> quota access uh, levels will only be accessed when we uh, use 90% of the existing WTO sheep meat and goat meat quota used. New Zealand Meat Board in partnership with Beef and Lamb New Zealand and the Meat Industry Association played a key role in negotiations and I'd really like to acknowledge MFAT and the MPI staff and the Minister for their excellent work in getting this deal across the line. Second big negotiation during this period has been the New Zealand EU government signed the free trade agreement on the 30th of June 2022, resulting in improved opportunity for New Zealand red meat access into the EU. Once again, ratification is required by respective governments and is hoped this is, could be concluded with entry into, first, into force in early 2024. Beef access not quite as good as the UK, but commences at 3,333 tonnes carcass weight equivalents on entry into force increasing to 10,000 tonnes in year seven and subsequent years at a reduced 7.5% quota tariff. Sheep meat and goat meat access is available for two quotas covering fresh, chilled and frozen quota at 0% quota tariff. This fresh chilled quota commences at 4,433 tonnes carcass weight equivalent, increasing to 13,300 in year seven. In subsequent years, well, the frozen quota begins at 8,233 tonnes, available on entry into force and increasing to 24,700 tonnes in year seven 
and subsequent years. Kind of a lot of numbers to throw out there, but this is a very significant outcome, these two free trade agreements as we provision to extract the value in the market. Once again, really want to acknowledge MPAC, MPI and the Minister for their dedication in delivering these two free trade agreements. Look, that concludes my report. I'll hand over to the Chief Executive for his report and then we'll take questions at the end of that. Sam. Tenekoto Kata, uh, my report covers three key areas. An overview of uh, last year, including the financial results, an update on quota management activities, and thirdly, reserves management, uh, investment performance, and industry good funding. Next slide, uh, please. I'd like to draw your attention firstly to uh, pages six and seven of our uh, annual report, which includes uh, deliverables uh, from the year. And of the 12 initiatives, uh, 10 are green and two are amber. Um, and both ambers are in hand, I'm pleased to say. One which uh, includes the Northern Ireland uh, border, which we're seeing some resolution there. The second key initiative that we continue to work on is increasing our interaction and farmer knowledge and engagement around the role of the New Zealand Meat Board as uh, separate from Beef and Lamb uh, New Zealand. Uh, just to, re uh, just to re uh, enforce uh, what the board's uh, role is, is that our quota management systems must meet the requirements of the Act, uh, meet New Zealand's international treaty and market obligations, and comply with any rules and requirements applied by an importing uh, country. And within that quota management system, there are a number of key uh, attributes that it has to make. And just a reminding you in shorthand, the, the, the quota goal is to facilitate the capture of best returns for quota markets. And so in that regard, our quota management must be efficient and effective, take into account the longer term uh, interests of New Zealand and the meat industry. It must deliver credible, accurate and reliable allocation and certification systems and processes, which indeed uh, meet international obligations. And lastly, as part of that role, we need to monitor and respond to trade, to market and regulatory developments that impacts New Zealand's success in those quota markets. You'll see before you hear uh, the financial results uh, for the year. Uh, the board reported a deficit of 4.3 million from reserves and quota management. And that deficit is made up of two parts. Firstly, reserve management, and secondly, quota management activities. Quota management activities recorded a surplus of 49,000 for the year. Our aim through the long term is to have a break even uh, figure for this function. And so we do have ups and downs during years, but indeed the long term uh, game is to minimize that cost for quota holders and applicants. A deficit of 4.4 million was reported from reserves management, which includes investment losses uh, from revaluing the portfolio of $5 million and a net 600,000 of interest and dividend income after reserve management uh, expenses. Reserve management has funded 900,000 of industry good funding for the informing uh, New Zealand beef program run by Beef and Lamb uh, New Zealand. In terms of our investment returns for the year, the investment fund returned a negative 4.1% return after fees and taxes compared to 10.2% in the 2021 year. After fees, tax and inflation, the actual return on investment was negative 11.3%. To contrast, in 2021, the real return was 5.3%. The medium term investment return target for the board is uh, after inflation, investment and management costs and tax is 3.3%. And just for those of you who are unaware, the, the annual CPI movement to September 30th, 2022 was 7.2%. I think the contrast between the two years clearly illustrates the volatility of equity markets. It's important to remember though that the board is in the investment game 
uh, for the long term, and we expect to see uh, volatility within uh, those years, but it is really the long term return that we are looking for. Uh, the New Zealand Meat Board balance sheet is strong with net assets of 78, 77.8 million. I'm sorry. Could we have the next slide, please? <clears throat> So our New Zealand uh, Meat Board Quota Management Systems are subject to statutory audits on a three-yearly basis, and that ensures compliance with the Crown's international uh, treaty obligation. Um, and MPI's uh, systems audit team undertake these results. I'm pleased to report that the audit findings uh, were that New Zealand Meat Board is achieving substantial compliance with the Meat Board Act. In shorthand, this is a good result but there were opportunities for improvement. Now, one such initiative was to review our verification, sorry, our verification uh, program, uh, shortly known as QCVP. And we did this in consultation with the industry, which was completed in December 2021. This resulted in the launch of a new single quota compliance verification system which was implemented at the start of the new processing season in October 2022. The benefits of this new uh, QCVS system is that it delivers a single system, uh, more consistency across different quotas. Uh, it focuses on our internal uh, verification requirements and ensuring those are met. And also we've looked at provisions for our new FTA uh, quota uh, verification as well. Can I have the next slide, please? As the chairman noted, uh, the UK free trade agreement has been a major undertaking uh, during the last two years. And a lot of the work the team has been doing is around preparedness for that implementation. Uh, one of the key things that's been uh, done over the last year is to establish quota management systems for administration of these new, new UK FTA quotas, and in particular for beef. Um, just a note here that the new sheet meat quota is only available to access after 90% utilisation of the UK WTO sheet meat and goat meat quota. And we'll continue to monitor utilisation to ensure that we can uh, enact that when the opportunity arises. Um, for those of you who don't have intimate knowledge of these systems, uh, it's been a lot of work and it's included the development and industry uh, consultation on transitional quota allocation mechanisms, uh, consultation on cost recovery for uh, administration of the UK FTA. Uh, we've had to develop a quota manual recording administration of the quota management systems and particularly for UK FTA beef. Uh, we've had to gazette uh, the quota management system and cost recovery fees uh, to meet legal requirements. Um, we've had to update our quota compliance and verification uh, requirements. And lastly, uh, there's been ongoing discussions with UK authorities via MPI uh, to ensure that uh, absolutely uh, the new systems that are put in place work well uh, for New Zealand and, and meet the re UK requirements uh, also. Come on to the next slide, please. One of the major initiatives this year has been our work with the US Customs and Border Protection. Uh, commonly known as US customers, which concluded over four years of work uh, to launch a paperless certification system for exporters of US, uh, or exporters that, that operate under the US uh, beef and veal quota. A small pilot was conducted to test the development and delivery and resolve issues before the rollout to all, is, all quota uh, export holders. Um, in parallel, the New Zealand Meat Board developed a data share system to submit live records to the US Customs to verify all USBV quota import activity. Following a soft launch in 2022, the US Customs launched this platform live in January 2023. Uh, the US Customs ESERT platform includes other meat quota countries and requires uh, importer customs entry records to match quota export records issued by the quota country, e.g. the New Zealand Meat Board before uh, goods are released. A recent survey of exporters confirmed the original business case with time 
efficiency and cost savings with adoption of this paperless certification. I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, acknowledge our technology provider Canary Data Solutions for support in delivering these projects. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the objectives of the Meat Board Reserves Investment, as Andrew noted, is the generation of funds to support industry good investments. This year, funding of 900,000 from New Zealand Meat Board Reserves Investment Income was granted to Beef and Land New Zealand X for the MPI partnered Informing New Zealand Beef Programme. It is proposed to continue this funding in the 2023 uh, year, and that's uh, open to farmer consultation uh, as we speak. This programme draws upon the Beef New Zealand uh, Genetics World Class uh, Sheep Genetics Programme and aims to apply these tools and disciplines to our beef industry, including our dairy beef industry. The objectives covered within the study are new natural national uh, breeding objectives, standardised trait measurements, commercial herd genomics, uh, genetic evaluation and data management, and ensuring that there's industry uptake of genetic information. Uh, the program is on track and we expect it to deliver an extra $460 million in industry profit over the next 25 years. And we believe that's absolutely uh, realistic given what's been achieved with our sheep industry. Next slide, please. So the Meat Board's quota management system is a key cog in New Zealand's export uh, success. And it's underpinned by effectiveness, efficiency, and continuous improvement. A significant focus of the last few years has been continuity systems, and we are in good shape. Looking ahead to the next year, uh, we continue to look at how we can improve our business activity. As I've noted earlier, uh, farmer communication and engagement uh, continues to be a major focus. And we have adopted specialised uh, communication around our quota and reserves management and as Andrew noted earlier, delivering uh, online annual meeting uh, designed to increase that access. We've also partnered uh, Beef and Land New Zealand AGM materials this year to uh, get uh, more information to farmers and we've seen increased engagement uh, as a result. We have ongoing preparedness planning for the UK New Zealand uh, FTA. And uh, while we wait for the UK to complete their domestic uh, ratification processes. As Andrew noted, current advice remains entry into force of the UK FTA as anticipated before uh, June 23rd, June, sorry, 30th of June, uh, 2023. And our preparedness planning is really focused on ensuring that this is a seamless uh, change for our exporters and their customers. But one of the things that we'll also be working on this year is just some of the quota volume amendments. And uh, as part of uh, New Zealand, UK and EU negotiations, uh, we have seen changes in um, some of those quota allocations. And in particular, a quota shift, which is apportioned uh, more of the high quality beef uh, quota in particular to the European Union. So we'll be moving to ensure that can take place on the 1st of July uh, 2023. A very important aspect that commences this year is a review of our quota allocation uh, mechanism. Legislation requires these reviews to take place every five years to ensure that these uh, quota management systems deliver the best economic returns uh, to New Zealand. We will be consulting with industry uh, later in 2023 on this. Lastly, uh, we're preparing for the establishment of the European New Zealand FTA quotas uh, for when they come into force in hopefully early 2024. In closing, I just want to say that the Meat Board has once again provided world-class quota management services to our industry and uh, has been a, a competent custodian of our industry reserves and will aim to be better again at that in 2023. In closing, can I thank my Meat Board staff for their outstanding efforts in what has been a very demanding uh, year. And finally, given that this will be uh, Chairman Andrew Morrison's uh, last AGM, I'd also like to thank and acknowledge him uh, personally on behalf of staff for his 
forward-looking, uh, his wise, his conscientious and supportive leadership, which we have uh, benefited immensely from. Uh, thank you, Andrew. That concludes my uh, report. I'll now hand back to Andrew to continue the meeting. Thanks, Sam. Look, that gives really good context around the 2.6 billion of the quota management, uh, the statutory audits, the FTA preparedness, the uh, paperless certificate, and the then subsequent funding of industry good for reserve management. So thank you very much, Sam. Um, I just open up for any questions. Yeah, hi, Andrew. Um, it's And hi, everyone. It's Nick Beebe. Uh, I'm the general manager for the New Zealand Meat Board. Um, and we've got a couple of questions that I will uh, just um, read out now. The, the first question is, the long-term price trends for sheep and beef do not reflect rising on-farm costs. What pressure can be put on meat processors to ensure adequate returns to farmers' margins? Content Farmers' margins continue to be eroded, um, yet protected and increased for the processes. Um, this uh, does not... Uh, the model has been flawed. This does not mean it should be adopted. Have you got an answer to that? I'm, I'm happy to answer that um, question, Nick. I mean, it's a, it's a good question and uh, absolutely can understand the pressure that is on uh, farmers at the moment in that, in that regard. Listen, what I will do, though, is I, I just want to keep my comments um, strictly to the meat board's uh, role in that regard. And there's really um, three things that I want to cover here. Um, as we've noted, um, really, the meat board's role is to ensure that we extract the best uh, value possible for all of the industry out of our quota markets. And so the first part of that is really around uh, those tariff savings. And Andrew outlined, I think it was, around $790 million of tariff savings, which we achieve uh, through uh, managing the quotas um, out of New Zealand. So, so particularly important that we maintain those quota savings because that um, mainly goes directly back uh, to farmers. The second aspect is really around how we allocate quota. And we have a role there in ensuring that the processes that we allocate, or the exporters, should I say, that we allocate um, quota to uh, are serious about that market, um, are committed to that market, and perform in that market. And we have a review system within the New Zealand Meat Board that ensures that when they're allocated quota, that they use that responsibly and, and effectively. And I thought that I think the third aspect um, is really that we've alluded to is, is around how do we um, administer the quota uh, most cost effectively and uh, efficiently. So I guess in that regard, uh, we, we've talked uh, just latterly about the five year review of the quota allocation and administration system. And that is all about uh, taking cost out, making sure that we're streamlined as possible and as efficient as possible. And again, um, through that, um, that does increase uh, the returns uh, to farmers. So Nick, that's that's really how I see the meat uh, can play a key role in ensuring that um, both our exporters perform well with quota, but ensuring that the maximum of value does come back uh, to the wider industry, including farmers as well. Thank you, Sam. Uh, Andrew, uh, a question here for you. How will New Zealand farmers benefit from the new beef access into the UK? Yeah, look, this is quite significant, I feel like. Uh, post the Brexit split, you know, historically we only had access for 1,300 tonnes into the EU28. Brexit split saw that, I think it was 454 tonnes access to the UK and the remainder into the EU. So look, these have been highly constrained markets for beef access. We've always had pretty significant sheep meat access into their 228,000 tonnes into the EU 28, split with the Brexit, still just negotiating those final splits. Anyway, the point being, those were commercially 
not significant amounts historically to build export programs into those markets. And so now with 12,000 tonnes day one and 33, uh, sorry, 3,333 tonnes on day one into EU, those become commercially significant where people can start building their programs to actually extract value. One of the roles that we have in New Zealand Meatball is administering these quotas, but it's, you know, it's also working in conjunction with MYA, Beef and Lamb New Zealand and MFAT because always want to be looking for ex, um, increasing our market access, different countries and different markets. So, yep, look, it, it is commercially significant and really want to call out ministers and ministries for delivering this. Thank you. I think, Nick, if I can just add to that, um, probably what we haven't noted today, that after 15 years uh, into the UK, there is no quotas and no tariffs, right? Um, and, and if you compare that to what Andrew said, 400 tonnes, as it sits at the moment, that is just a mammoth um, change and achievement and market opportunity uh, for New Zealand. Cool, thank you both for that. And there's one final question um, that I think I'll, I'll answer. The question was, are there opportunities to expand the digital or uh, paperless project into other quota markets? Um, and look, the way I would answer that is we undertook this project to really um, increase our efficiency, not only within the New Zealand Meat Board, but within uh, the, the meat processing uh, partners, businesses as, as well. And what we have seen through this project is that it has absolutely achieved those objectives. Uh, as, um, and there are um, opportunities to expand this into new quota markets also. Uh, we, alongside the New Zealand government, are in active talks with the UK to make sure that they, those new quotas um, can be transacted with um, digital certificates. And we are also hopeful that we can expand that um, programme into the EU over um, over a, a medium to longer term as well. Um, so yes, there are opportunities to expand this into the future and it has delivered real benefits to, to our sector. I don't have any other questions, Andrew, so I'll hand back to you. Look, thanks for those questions uh, from, from people. That's those good. This is the opportunity to take to get clarity on some of that stuff and really appreciate that. Can we move to the company resolutions, please? So next slide. As I stated earlier, these uh, have been voted on both digitally and online and the uh, voting concluded on the 22nd of uh, March that we're in now. But we still have the opportunity to discuss them. So the resolution one is the resolution on the slide is proposing that the director fee pool for farmers and industry processor exporter directors be increased to 155,500 per annum from 147,500, a total increase of 8,000 or 5.4 percent. This represents a fee increase for the chairman to 31,515, currently 29,900, and for farmer industry and industry directors to 17,705 currently 16,008. Taking into account the benchmarking we did a couple of years ago, the board recommended a 5.4% increase for the 2023 financial year for the uh, directors. The CPI uh, movement for the period was actually 7.3, but staff has been moved to, uh, with internally to the tune of 5.3 and directors found, or 5.4 and directors found was appropriate to match that. Director fees are funded from reserve management income and quota management for fee income. And so not actually funded uh, from farmers, but sort of via the process of reserve management income. This resolution is now open for any questions. Farmers have the ultimate say by accepting or rejecting this, then as I say, open for discussion. Any questions, please? Andrew, there, there are no questions that have come through on this resolution. Okay, um, I will then bring up resolution two, but if there's still people want to ask questions, we can answer questions at the end of either. 
Okay, can we see the next resolution, please? I know there's a time lapse in the way we're presenting. That's just the reason why I gave that opportunity. Okay, resolution two was the appointment of the auditor proposed in the notice of meeting that KPMG be appointed as the New Zealand Meat Board Auditor for the year ended 30th of September 2023. The board, just to give some context around this, the board conducted a tender process in 2021 and after consideration and competing proposals agreed that KPMG continued to be the most competitive August audit service that was offered to us then. Consideration has been given to the merit of a new provider and offset by the deeper institutional knowledge of the incumbent. I also want to call out there is a rotation of both partners and manager and audit manager um, ensconced basically in legislation by the ex external reporting board of the XRB, which is an independent crown entity responsible for counting and auditing and assurance standards in New Zealand. So they have a prescribed rotation period for large not not for profit public benefit entities of seven years. So I just want to confirm that the KPMG partner we have been working with is uh, we always rotate partners and managers to those standards. Uh, any questions on this one? Andrew, there's there's no questions uh, at this time, but just uh, I think it's worth noting that if questions do come through, we can wrap them up at the at the end. Yep, and we are also in many with if anyone wants to email questions in relation to things, poll understand for things, we're happy to take those. Okay, the next uh, issue is item nine, the annual meeting consultation of industry good funding. If we could just go to the next slide, please. So on this one, we are seeking feedback on the proposal to fund up to 1.4 million for the 2022-2023 uh, season for investment income from industry good funding for the Informing New Zealand Beef Program. This has been approved by MPIs through the Sustainable Food and Fibre Futures and as a partnership with industry. Further details for this program were included in the annual report. Just want to give some context. The New Zealand Meat Board grant funding comes from investment income, not capital. It's from investment income, less reserves management expenses. So for the 2022, sorry, the 2020-2021-2022 period, we funded 900,000, and this was uh, funded against a milestone delivery program. It's proposed with this consultation that we can afford to fund potentially 1.4 million for the 2022-2023, depending on the cash interest and dividend returns, and also tied to the milestone delivery of the program. Um, feedback has been given on this through the consultation program, and so the board will consider that, but I would be keen to hear if there's any uh, questions on this one also uh, during the meeting. There's no questions at this time, Andrew, but we, as I said earlier, we can, if questions do come through, um, we can link back to them at the end. Okay, if that's the case, I might move to general business. Um, under the general business, is there anything that uh, meeting participants would like to bring up with the board? If not, I would like to just move to acknowledgements. It's been quite a significant year in um, change within our board, and I just want to acknowledge a few participants that we have gained and lost through the year. David Servo, first I'd like to acknowledge him. David was one of the MIA representatives who joined us uh, for quite a short period because David has then moved on to uh, out of the industry and taken up a position in Australia. David did 12 months with us and retired February 2023 and returned to Australia. Really want to acknowledge David's contribution. He brought a strong commercial focus and always of much value uh, at a New Zealand meat board level. George Tatham will retire after nine years service too on the New Zealand meat board. George was to be concluding at this meeting, but due to the um, events of the East Coast um, Cyclone Gabriel, we've extended George's period because we have to wait till new beef and lamb directors are elected and we put the election process off for two months 
to give those candidates appropriate time in the event of such a catastrophic event to work through their own business so then they can get back out and uh, do their campaigning. Also, I'd like to acknowledge Renee Hogg. Renee completed her term as a government appointed director and finished up in June 2022. Renee was a strong contributor, really enjoyed Renee. She was um, very diligent in her questioning around process and brought a lot to the board, so I'd like to acknowledge that. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, replacement for one of the government appointees is David, David Walker. We are very blessed to have David join us on the board. David has a long history in, um, in the sector. I was quickly trying to pull up all the things he's done, but um, if you'll just excuse me for a minute while I find him. David was the 20, sorry, 2017 to 2021 was the ambassador and permanent representative to the WTA, WTA TO based in Geneva. He was the first New Zealand chair on the WTO General Council and also chaired WTO Dispute Settlement Body and Committee on Agriculture. So we are well served to have David joining our board and thank you, David. I'd also like to acknowledge Pete Connolly joining us as the Processor Exporter Director appointed March 2023. You will all know Pete is the CEO of Ansco Foods and so we welcome him to our table. He's gonna bring a lot of uh, as I say, commercial disciplines. Also want to acknowledge the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Primary Industries and Minister of Agriculture for all those um, trade agreements and access that they have delivered through the year. That's been quite significant. Thanks for the question around that, for the beef access. It gives a context around the significance of this. I'd also like to acknowledge MPI and MFAT to support New Zealand Meat Board with the implementation requirements because administering quota and the physical implementations, we need to work very closely with the ministries. And finally, I'd really like to acknowledge the New Zealand Meat Board, Wellington, Brussels and London staff. Without them, of which quota management operations wouldn't be affected. Just to give some context around this, um, in the COVID world, and let's, let's acknowledge where we are moving well out of that, the administration of these quotas, we had to put dual teams on, had to have them coming into the room on split shifts and everything. So I just really want to acknowledge that. And they have worked tirelessly and incessantly to enable uh, the free flow of product into the market through the administration of the quota. So team, take a heartfelt thanks for that. And I really want to acknowledge that. Finally, for me, I'd like to notify the New Zealand, uh, the, sorry, the next New Zealand Meat Board annual meeting will be held online March 2024, and I would encourage you all to join us and hope you see value in doing so. Kate, can I hand to you just for a moment? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity on behalf of the board to acknowledge that this will be Andrew's last meeting as chair of New Zealand Meat Board. Andrew served the board for nine years and he's chaired for the last five. Um, New Zealand Meat Board at times is quite a functional board, but nobody understands and articulates the importance of the role that the board plays in managing quota for the prosperity of our sector and country as well as Andrew does. Now, the last five years have seen enormous changes through the Brexit process, um, the negotiation of uh, FTA agreements. And throughout this time, Andrew has been the ultimate ambassador for our sector. He's forged relationships at all levels of the industry and government, both here and offshore. And his leadership and his mana have served our sector well through this time, and the value of those ongoing relationships is immeasurable. So, Andrew, on behalf of the board, we thank you for your leadership, and we wish you well. Uh, at our next meeting, we'll welcome a new member, uh, Geoffrey Young, and we'll look forward to working with him. So, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Kate. It's a sector well worth putting time and effort into, and I've been pleased to do it because it's a sector that I love. Um, just wanted to may finally call out, um, much so thanks staff, Sam uh, McIver, CEO, and Nick Beebe, GM of uh, New Zealand Meat Board, have done a sterling role in provisioning all the changes and the, uh, the, the having to navigate the process of the past few years. So Sam and Nick, just want to call you out. Thank you very much. Look, I'd just like to declare the meeting closed, the official part. We 